Hi, I'm Ron. Thanks for checking this out. As always, I have my medium A flute by Colin Peterson. Uh, we'll be doing just a little bit of playing at the end of this short video. Uh, so if you have a medium A Native American or Native American style flute handy, please grab it. All right. Uh, what I want to think about a bit today is what I think is uh, a quick way of improving our flute playing, uh, or actually any of our music making. And to think about this, I'd like for us to do an imagination game together. Now, I love everything about recording technologies and being in the studio and all that stuff, but just for a little while, I would like for you to imagine the world the way it was not so very long ago. So in this world, there are no recording devices. There are no mass communication devices. Uh, there are no ways of amplifying sound. So in this world, if you are hearing music, it's either because you yourself are making the music or somebody else within unamplified earshot of you is making music. In other words, it's a real time, real life experience. Now imagine that you've grown up in this world and for all your life, you've heard about a really, really special musician who lives far enough away from you that you've never had a chance to hear them. But everybody just keeps raving about this musician and saying, hey, their playing is magical. You would not believe it unless you got to hear it. Now let's imagine a little bit more that uh, you hear this musician is coming to town. And for the first and probably only time in your life, you're going to have a chance to hear this musician. Do you think you might mark that date on your calendar? Do you think you might be willing to buy a ticket for that event? And then when you get there, how carefully are you going to pay attention at that event? to everything that musician does, every move they make, how they present themselves. Most importantly, you're going to be listening to the music that they make with undivided attention. And if it turns out that everything you've heard about this musician was on target, that they really are magical, uh, that you've never heard anything like this, in your life before and probably never will again. How much will you treasure the memory of that event? Now, what I think is missing for a lot of us is that kind of attentiveness when we are playing our flutes. I don't think it's necessarily our fault that we uh, a lot of times don't pay attention to the music that's going on around us. Uh, because of all these recording technologies that we all love so much, we are surrounded by music almost 24-7. Uh, a lot of us kind of use music as a soundtrack for our life, kind of pleasant background noise that we rarely give our full attention to. Uh, and there are actually times if, uh, if people are using music aggressively or using it to try to sell me something, I'll intentionally switch it off, right? I'll just get my brain someplace else. I don't want to pay attention to this. But then when it's time to focus on my own music making, I sometimes have to really consciously switch back on so that I'm really paying attention to what's going on. Now, I, you know, like I said, I love the, the recording tech. I love being in the studio. I love all the ways that we can share music with each other now. Uh, but what I'm really concerned about is the level of attentiveness that we're bringing to our music making. So I'd like to share a couple of ways that I have found really, really helpful to bring more focus to what I'm doing uh, with my flute and with my music making in general. For one of them, you won't even need a flute but uh, for the other one, you will. All right, this first thing you really don't even need your flute for. Um, it's a, an exercise that's been around in a lot of different versions for a long time. Uh, there's a nice version in W.A. Matthews, the listening book that I've used with composition students quite a bit. 
Uh, I also have a musician friend who uh, studied with John Cage, who said that Mr. Cage used to do something similar uh, with some of his students. So, uh, you know, this is how I like to do it. Uh, feel free to adapt it to, to your own purposes. You will need a pad of paper and a pencil. And then I like to go outside to a soundscape that I feel really comfortable in. Uh, for me, that usually means there are as few loud machine noises going on as possible. But if you're really into machine noises, go for it. You know, adapt this to your own purposes. All right, then I like to find some place where I can sit comfortably. And for about 20 to 30 minutes, open your ears wide. Hear as far out as you possibly can. Hear as close by as you possibly can. And listen for as much detail as you possibly can. And simply write down every single sound that you hear. And try to be specific about it if you can. Like if, if you hear a bird singing and you don't know what it is, just say, oh, there's a bird singing. Uh, but if you hear a Carolina wren doing an alarm call, you can say, oh, there's a Carolina wren doing an alarm call. You know, like there are people like my brother who can hear a car coming a mile down the road and tell you what engine it's in and whether it has a blown carb or whatever. I don't even know what that stuff means. But write down every single sound that you hear for about 20 or 30 minutes. The first time you do this, you may be really surprised at how many different sounds are going on in the soundscape, uh, how many of them are really beautiful and even musically interesting uh, for, for your own music making. Um, so it's something that's really worth doing multiple times, I think. Uh, soundscapes can be very, very different depending on what time of day you're there. So it might be interesting to go to the same place early in the morning and then uh, another time in the evening and just see how the soundscape has changed. Now, I would like you to try to bring that, uh, that level of really focused listening to your flute playing as well. And for this exercise, you will need your flute. So grab your medium A flute. And uh, what I'd like for you to do is um, play a nice, long, low note. And we're going to go to the fundamental, the bottom note, all the holes covered. If you usually practice on a microphone, please do not use your microphone. I want you to hear the, the sound that is coming out of your flute, not the sound that's coming out of a loudspeaker. All right. Now, what we're going to do is to try to keep a nice, steady, steady sound. We're going to breathe really, really well. We don't breathe up here. We breathe down here. All right. Want to feel that diaphragm working, supporting that sound. Um, not a loud sound a very sustained sound with no vibrato whatsoever. And I want your attention to be fully focused on the flute sound. Nothing else matters for the moment, but keeping a good, steady sound. Now, I'm going to have a go at it, and then I'm going to stand here for about 15 or 20 seconds and let you have a go at it. All right, here's my shot. I started with a very gentle tonguing. Sometimes I use the tongue, sometimes I don't. Uh, I actually heard my, my sound doing this a little bit occasionally, and I don't know whether that was something going on in the breathing or, or just uh, my heart uh, you know, thumping a little bit extra. I, I have no idea, all right? But I heard it, and that's what I'm interested in, is keeping my attention focused enough that I really hear accurately the sound that is coming out of my flute. All right, your turn. I'm going to stand here and do nothing for about 20 seconds, and you can have a go.
Okay, how did that go for you? Were you able to keep your attention fully focused on the flute sound? Right? If you're like me, it's very easy for the brain to, to kind of check out and start darting around to a lot of different places. You know, what do I think I'm going to have for dinner tonight? Uh, do you think anybody's going to notice these earrings? You know, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, so it can take some practice at first to really keep the mind focused on the sound that we're making. But we actually want to carry that over into all of our flute playing eventually and all of our music making. We want to hear accurately the sounds that we are actually making. And I think it's really important to do this without a microphone because no matter how good a microphone is, it can only hear what you're giving it. The best we can hope for it is that it will hear accurately what we're giving it. So if we want to have beautiful sounds, full-bodied sounds, good energy sounds coming out of our sound systems or going into our recording software or wh whatever we're doing, uh, we need to be giving the microphone a really good sound. And I think this exercise of just doing a simple, low, sound and keeping our attention fully focused on it will really quickly improve the focus of the sounds that we're making. Uh, and you'll hear the sound begin, begin to grow in body. You'll begin to hear it have more focus. You'll be able to find ways to color it. Uh, what happens if I think of the color blue while I keep my nice focused sound? Maybe today is a red day. Right. And you'll be amazed, if you're listening carefully, you'll be amazed at how different the sound can be just because of the energy and focus that you're bringing to it. The changes may be subtle, especially at first, but if you're really paying attention, you will hear them. <clears throat> now, at this point, you may be saying to yourself, you know, that kind of attentiveness is something that I usually associate with meditation, and you're right on target. Uh, our flute playing, our flute practice can become a meditation. And in sometimes in places, this has been an intent of music making. There's a long tradition of, in Japan of Zen monks who use their shakuhachi playing as a meditation practice. And we can bring some of that into our native flute playing as well. It improves the sounds that we're making, improves the focus of the music that we're making. All right, so... I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you did, please click those like and subscribe buttons. Maybe share this with a friend. Uh, you can also go to my uh, Enjoying Your Native American Flute playlist, which is uh, full of uh, hopefully helpful playing tips. All right. Thanks for hanging out, and I will look forward to seeing you the next time.